Now you'll notice this cage is seemingly empty apart from that quail. And that's because our little male and Sunny are inside. So if we go here and we open this. Hello guys. We can see if I can put the uh, light up. Look, two eggs. So she laid the second egg yesterday. Um, so she'll lay the third egg tomorrow because they lay them every other day. Um, she's used to me opening the box. He is not, which is why he's kind of running around. But yes, yeah, so we have eggs already, which is really, really great. I'm really excited to see how she does this year because obviously we had the trauma of last year. But they have done really, really well as a couple. Um, and it's nice that he's going into the nest box as well because it means that he's going to be helping out with those babies when they hatch. But for now, let's pop that lid back on and leave them to it. Well, we're back down by the spinach bed and I'm super happy with this because actually this little poly tunnel is working wonders and you can see how much they're growing. So even though we're now in November, um, it's not only kept the pets, pests off, which was kind of the main thing, but it's doing really, really well in insulating them and keeping them warm and making sure on those sunny days, this tunnel warms up more than anything else does. So you can see here, we've got some nice little first leaves coming through on the spinaches. Um, I will obviously, as I said before, once they get to a certain size, I will split them and just place them out a bit more uh, easily. At the other end, you can see there are some chard um, and they're growing astonishingly fast. They're doing really, really well. So you can see there, there's the chard. Um, so if I find any more of these cheap little tunnels, I may grab some because not only could I use them on this bed, but I could use them where I've got the little winter cabbages and stuff as well, just to get them growing a little bit faster. Really, really impressed with this. Thought I'd give you a little update on Mr. Grumbles. He's doing really well. I've moved him into the other tank. Um, he's just in this until I upgrade him. Um, he's obviously very, very small and I've had issues with heat lamps because I've bought several and they've not worked properly. So until I get a heat lamp, a decent heat lamp, then can uh, effectively heat a larger tank. Um, he's staying in this slightly smaller one. Um, but he actually doesn't move around that much at the moment. Um, I wonder whether where he was before he wasn't properly looked after because he's quite sluggish even when he's got um, some high heat lamp temperature on him. Um, but he's just having a nibble as you can see. He's doing really well. We're bringing him out as well and he's having trundling around the uh, the living room quite a bit. And then when he sort of gets tired and sits in the shell, we pop him back in to the uh, to his tank. But he's a very sweet little guy and not grumbly at all. Um, but yeah, he's doing really, really well. Well, I thought we'd quickly revisit the microgreens after obviously last week I brought these boxes apart and they were just starting to germinate and you can now see how far they've gone. Um, now these are the uh, radish and they're actually almost ready to go. They are always ready to bring out. And I'll bring them into normal light so you can see them. This is the pak choy and although it wasn't um, spread ideally, um, it's actually germinated quite nicely. Um, it's leaning a bit towards that way because I've only just turned the lights on. The uh, sunflower seeds are also doing really, really well, although they are getting really leggy and I think this is too far down. So I need to move the germination up a level so they're closer, so they stay shorter. And they're also starting to drop a little bit because they need to be watered. Um, but they literally, in the space of a week, are almost ready to harvest now. I would say these are harvestable today or tomorrow. Um, so I'm really, really happy. Now, although we've got a few dahlia flowers left um, and, and a couple of zinnias as well, the kind of the rain, the wet has 
almost done them in. Now we have been lucky enough not to have a frost here, so the foliage hasn't been frosted off yet, but we have had fox damage jumping on there and that's kind of fallen over. So it's time really to take them up. So I think just to save myself work later on, I'm gonna start clipping them back. So I'll just take off all the foliage to start with and clean up this bed. And you can see actually there's a lot of foliage and it hasn't been frosted off but you can all go in a compost heap and then I will lift those roots and store them ready for winter. Well it's been a really super wet weekend and as you can hear it's raining at the moment um, but I've been concentrating on inside and trying to get rid of these aphids and this white fly issue um, and a lot of you commented about making up some mixtures of different uh, soapy waters and adding certain things. So I've tried that and given it a go. And actually, you know what? It's really working. So the aphids have just been sprayed and it's working really, really well. Um, and as for the white fly, again, that's worked really well. So I cut this lantana really, really closely back um, so that I could just deal with these little shoots. And you can see there actually aren't many white fly at all on them, which is really, really great. And then this hibiscus, is almost totally free now. Um, so what I've been doing is I took your advice. So I spray the top leaves with soapy water first. Then I go like this and you get all the little white flies coming out and they land. And as soon as they land on soapy water, they die. And then you can also spray it underneath. So you can obviously see here, that's all like those little white specks are the nymph, the nymph cases of the white fly. But there aren't any real, oh there, I say, I say there aren't any. There's one less now. Um, but yeah, it's dealt with the situation really, really well. So I'm gonna use that going forward. Hopefully I can eradicate them over the winter. So coming into next spring, I won't have so much, so much of an issue. Well, I think we can all agree that not every day is an outdoor homesteading day. Either it's absolutely awful weather, or you just don't feel like it. And that is one of my days. It isn't great outside, but I just don't feel like doing anything outside. And also when you've only got a small urban homestead, um, winter is kind of quiet because most of your stuff is poultry and veggies, which don't do a lot in the winter. If you've got large animals, this is the time of pregnancy, of tupping, carving. Um, but for the smaller homesteader, who's just got, as I say, poultry and veggies, not a vast amount going on, but that's a prime time to get sorted. So today I am basically just chilling out. I've got uh, a bit of YouTube, Kurt Stone on the TV, and I'm going through some books, got a cup of tea, and got my list. Uh, so basically at the moment I'm listing my Broomwood Farm projects, things that I need to do over the next year, because of course we are coming now to the crucial point where next year, hopefully this time next year, we will be starting to build our house. Uh, so a lot of this stuff needs to get done. And things like trees, they need to have been planted yesterday. Um, so the wildflower meadow, of course, we've got things like planting uh, buddleia groves and starting the woodland. Uh, for the lookout, we've got uh, ter terrace stepping to put in. Um, and we've got things like fencing to do. Um, and this I'm excited about planting a living willow entrance, which will run from the lookout to the nuttery. Um, and then from the nuttery, we've got obviously nut trees, and then we've got pond restoration stuff, we've got the hidden gardens, and that is just kind of conservation-y, garden-y stuff. That's nothing to even think about to do with homesteading. Um, so obviously, if we're going to be moving up there in the next year, year and a half, I need to start thinking about uh, getting electric fencing in, sourcing my animals, building chicken tractors. Um, so today, today is just a down day uh, where I can just take a breather, collect my thoughts. I'm a list builder, so I like a list because you can tick things off and work through it. Um, so that is today's job and uh, hopefully it will be very, very productive and help spur me on for the future. And I'll be going through many, many, many cups of tea. Um, and I'm also joined by the dog. And as you might just see here, Elijah is also prowling around the living room at the moment. Uh, so yeah, a very, very nice, comfortable day indoors. Thank you.